beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed stay blessed We truly desire to know more of you. We desire to see your power and your glory in our life. We desire to see your glory, your kingdom, your majesty. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will do something remarkable in our lives. Do something do something great. Do something amazing. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed. Please play strings, strings, strings. Sing majesty. Yeah. Majesty. Sing majesty, yeah. majesty. Forever I'm changed. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. In the presence of your majesty. Just the voices. Sing majesty. Yeah. Majesty. majesty, sing majesty. Yeah. majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hands. Empty, Empty handed. handed. But a light in your hand. Sing majesty. Yeah. Majesty. Sing majesty. Majesty. Forever we are changed. Forever. We are changed by your love. We're in the presence of your majesty. Go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. Just connect. Sing in the spirit. Sibalala mumbrish kalabalala boshipahari. Sing 
Come on, lift your hands and worship Him from the depths of your heart. Holy One, help me worship Him. One more time with your hands lifted up and from the depths of your heart. is healing a chest condition right now there is there is a chest condition that the Lord is healing right now I rebuke that sickness I rebuke that devil in the name of the Lord Jesus I rebuke that devil right now right now the Lord is healing a lady of asthma you begin to cough right now asthma asthma is being healed that devil of darkness I curse that spirit right now. The Lord is healing asthma. Asthma. Asthma is being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing another lady. Your hair falls out of your hair. It's been a very serious thing. Sometimes it looks like you deliberately removed it. This is a demonic attack. The Lord is healing that lady right now. 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 Someone is being healed of a blood condition. I don't know what it is. But the power of God is going to come upon you right now. Right now. That blood condition. I curse that blood condition. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cause that blood condition. There's someone outside. The Lord is healing you of migraine headache. Severe migraine headache. Severe migraine headache. Especially in the night before you sleep, it begins to affect you. The Lord is healing that migraine headache right now. The Lord is healing that migraine headache right now. Hallelujah. I'm hearing the name Ruth. I'm hearing the name Ruth. God is bringing breakthrough to the family of a lady called Ruth. Ruth, Ruth. Because I'm seeing the angel of the Lord. And he's saying they are bringing miracles to the family of Ruth. The family of Ruth. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Listen, let me tell you something. This is the kind of ground where everything is possible. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that cometh unto God must believe that he exists and then he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. The rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Please lift up your hands. There are 11 people that I see in the spirit. Lift your hands inside and outside. The power of God is going to come upon 11 people. 11 people that I see. And God is breaking afflictions in families. 11 people at the count of three. The power of God will move inside and outside. There are some of you who are outside. Right now, 11 people. Lord, let your power touch those people right now. 
11 of them I see in the spirit. There's one person, I see someone at the outside, outside at the overflow. The power of God is coming upon that one person. No other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus. His word. Is worthy of honor. Sing it from the depths of your heart. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name. Visit us tonight, O oh God. Do what only you can do. Let your people know that you are in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I welcome everyone tonight. We apologize for those of us outside. I want you to know that no matter how far you are, the Lord will touch you this night. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not come to seek an idol. You have come to seek the living God. Hallelujah. One of the things that the Lord has been doing and will keep doing in this place is revealing to us the mysteries of the kingdom. Everyone say the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord declared that this is a year of light and dominion. Dominion that comes through light, not guesswork. Dominion that comes through understanding. Psalm 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. And so they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. Said, but have I not said ye are gods? Are you following me now? And all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. The advantage you have in the kingdom, listen to me. The advantage you have in the kingdom it's not just that you have declared the lordship of Christ over your life, but you have come to a point where you have spiritual understanding. You understand how this system functions. And then the things that used to be a mystery are no longer a mystery to you because you know that there is an operation that governs them. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, what you know in the kingdom stays with you. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? When you know it, he said they are life to those who find them. That means they sought for it. They are life to do, not to everybody. 
They are not life to every Christian. They are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. And so as God opens our eyes to see these things in the spirit, we must, we must be passionate about making them part of our lives. The question is, how many of us are really willing to apply the things we are hearing? It's, it's, you see, the, 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 the issue with the body of Christ may not necessarily be lack of revelation, but our inability to take the word of God and make it become part of our life in truth. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit. Ephesians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, we welcome those of us who have come from far. May the Lord bless you. Your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Verse 9. Ephesians chapter 3. From verse 9. By the way, let me, let me appreciate as many of us who were able to embark on the fast. I know that some of us didn't fast. Praise the Lord. But for as many of us who opened up ourselves, the Bible says, He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Men can be mocked, but God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. Hallelujah. Whatsoever a man sows, that man will we are sowing to the spirit and we understand that there is a reward. Say there is a reward. Say it one more time, there is a reward. Brothers and sisters, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are certain things that are rewards. If everything in the kingdom is a gift, what then is the reward of obedience? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, there remained a rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, there still remained a rest. It says, let us labor to enter that rest. For he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works. Hallelujah. So I want to really salute every one of us. I know for many of us, doing a dry fast like that may not be very your body because you are living in the body may not be easy but you see his strength is made perfect in our weakness hallelujah it doesn't kill don't let any man fool you it does not kill it does something to you in the spirit that until you are spiritually minded you may never understand you see i keep saying it if i ask this sister to stand Stand where you are without telling her the reason why she should stand huh? and the benefits, whatever she will gain for standing. She will be wary. Are you getting my point? And there's every tendency that she will compromise. But if I tell her, stand here because somebody is about to pass, let him locate you and bless you. Even when she's tired, there is a higher revelation that is beyond the pain of her body and it keeps her. This is the revelation that makes men spiritual. So although your body is weak, Paul says, so then, death works in us. 
that life may walk in you. Physically speaking, your body is weak. You see everything and you want to take it. Even if it is, even if it is Vicks Lemon Plus or what. You just want to take anything that can help you. The clearest proof of obedience is when you have the opportunity to disobey. That's when your obedience is perfected. If I rob you of an opportunity to obey and I don't give you an option, you are not really obedient. That's why there was another tree in the Garden of Eden. So that the will of man could freely choose. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you. May God bless us. We will reap the benefit for sure. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me also use this opportunity to salute all of the workers. I was just thinking about the workforce we have in this ministry. Believe me, you may not understand the enormous responsibility that working in this ministry entails. You must love God to be a faithful worker. They are bounded by love and um, I can only imagine trying to do all of the things they are doing while praying and fasting complete dry fast the Lord will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ my Bible tells me that God is no man's debtor he will reward you your labor of love in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3. That's where we are. Verse 9. It's projected so we can just look to save time. And to make all men see what is the what? Of what? It says the fellowship of the mystery. To make men see what is the fellowship. The resultant effect of our partaking in the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom. Which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the intent. That means this is why he is now revealing to us the mystery. That now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multifaceted wisdom of God. That means that the wisdom of God is shrouded in mysteries. And every time God wants to display new dimensions of himself, he opens people, he grants them access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord i give all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me all of me lord Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Brothers and sisters, we reign in this kingdom on the strength of our knowledge of the mysteries. 
Hallelujah. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is not about claiming, I take it. No. Dominion is the resultant effect of the spiritual understanding of this system. The laws that have been put in operation. Hallelujah. And how to be able to work with these laws to ensure that the kingdom of God comes across a territory. So dominion has nothing to do with just trying to claim. It's not about jacking yourself and trying to believe. When Jesus walked upon the earth, every time he looked at things, he interpreted them on the strength of his knowledge about the mysteries of the kingdom. When he saw the winds and the waves, he didn't join the other people to say, I think we're in rainy season. He looked well and he said, no, this is demonic. Are you getting what I'm saying now? All through the Bible, all those who were able to, by reason of some spiritual means, have access to the mysteries of the kingdom, they were the ones who reigned in their generation. Isaac understood something about spiritual laws. And when men were running away for famine, he sowed in that land. And he reaped a hundredfold. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Philistines envied him. He increased, he worked strong, he made progress. Moses had an encounter and there was something that Moses knew. He knew that his rod was the rod of God and that that rod could do mighty things. Brothers and sisters, those who will be featured in this end time move of God are not just men who say, God, use me. They are men who will have to understand the ancient keys that kept the heavens and the earth closed and that opened them at will. If you do not understand this key, you will die like a member the world is becoming spiritual every day i hope you realize it used to be physical when giants and great men will threaten others then it now became intellectual hallelujah so your dominion is on the strength of your knowledge of intellect and and having knowledge of your biological environment and so on and so forth but before Christ comes, it is they that know their God. They that know is the same word know like a man knowing a woman. They that have come into practical intimacy that has proofs. They that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I don't want to live my life guessing hoping i'm right hoping that the laws of the spirit that have been operated are the correct ones only to find out that it's not like that the bible says awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light he said walk circumspectly as wise not as unwise in the days that will come hear me those that do not understand the mysteries of the kingdom will die like men. Mm. But they looked at Paul and Barnabas and they said the gods have come to us. They called them the Greek gods, Zeus and Hermes. Because, I, 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 oh my God. Look at the Bible says how that um, Peter now, right? A snake beat his hand, a viper. And he just shook it. And they said this is not an ordinary human being. Imagine, imagine if all Moses had to bring the people out of Egypt was a desire to stop seeing people suffering. You know he would have died right there? Right there in the palace. That's what a lot of people are carrying. They have zeal. Lord, I want to save my family with zeal. 
zeal without knowledge will end you in disaster because you will enter territories where you do not understand the codes of operation and your zeal will frustrate you it will make it look like Jesus did not die there are many people who have sustained casualties some people went to their villages out of zeal and they set altars on fire they set shrines on fire before it finished burning, half of them were para was paralyzed from top to bottom. Like the temple, the curtain that tore when Jesus died. Half of them from top to bottom. Left hand side or right hand side. What do you know that sponsors your audacity to confront evil? What secret have you found? Those of us in ministry... What have you found that assures you that ministry will last? Mm. He says, I found your word and I did eat them. And it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. What have you found? What have you found that gives you confidence? In this wicked society that we live in. What have you found, brothers and sisters? In Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 15 downwards, the Bible says Jesus found, he found it, where it was written about him, the prophecy of Isaiah. And he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. What have you found that gives you a guarantee that you will be married? By now you know being beautiful is not enough. What have you found? What is your spiritual advantage? When all else fail, what do you stand on? Job is one man I have come to respect and love. When you study the book of Job, ah yeah, This was a man who had all kinds of catastrophe in his life. Do you know what it means for a man to be the richest man in the East? The East has always been associated with wealth. Right? Wise men came from the East. Job was such a, he said, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, the young men saw me and bowed their heads. The old men saw me and they stood up. What kind of influence did Job command? And then all of a sudden, in one day, everyone say one day. Say it one day. It was not one prophetic day. It was one literal day. They came to Job and said, Job, your children, they are all dead. Your cattle, your house, everything. And all that Job was left with was his wife and his health. When everything disappeared, Job checked around, what mystery do I know that can help me now? And Job said, he blessed the name of the Lord and said, naked I came naked I will return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How can a man speak like that? Do you not know that there must be something you know that makes you to give thanks like that? Your children, your cattle, everything. Job did not know that there is a possibility of knowing what can happen in the spirit. I hope you know that the meeting that happened in the spirit was an advantage that was given to us by the person who wrote that book. Those in the earth realm did not know that something transpired like that. Little did they know that the sons of God came and Satan was part of them. And he said, Satan, where are you coming from? That means Satan does not stay in one place. And that means Satan is not omnipresent. Are you seeing that now? And Satan said, from my voyage around this territory. And he said, while you went around to families and territories did you come across a man called job satan said i know him i've seen him 
I've seen him. I destroyed other families, jeopardized other people. But when I came to Job, I saw a level of fortification that frustrated me. Come on now. This is a conversation happening in the heavenlies. Whereas Job was minding his business here in the earth realm. Imagine what is being said about you in the spirit. And you are here just walking around. Naive. And you become a victim of the result of meetings where you did not participate in. I refuse it. I refuse it. The Bible says they know not, neither do they understand. Hmm. Men discuss things in the spirit. And humans in the earth realm receive the result of the meetings. And someone gets up in the morning and returns back with one leg. That is the result of a meeting that was carried out. You were not there, but you were the victim of it. Don't let anyone fool you. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Someone gets up in the morning, blesses the name of the Lord, dresses well, and you carry your, your fire to the office, only to return in the evening with a sack letter. Can I tell you something? When you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, you will know that nothing just happens in the earth realm. Jesus gave us a picture. He said, let it be done in the earth as it is. That means the earth is always a reflection of something that happens already in the heavens. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you learning something? My passion is to help you see from a spiritual lens. To give you a new vista so that you do not join men. You don't call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. You can step home on the strength of a higher spiritual advantage. And you know what law to engage. This is what makes you more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. That means if Job had cursed God, he would have activated a law that would have killed him. Are you getting that? Because his wife gave us a revelation. She knew that that law existed. She said, Job, I'm your wife, but I'm tired. Do you want to die fast? Curse God. This is another revelation on its own. I don't know how you read your Bible, but I have positioned myself to see light in everything in the world. I don't read my Bible to have sermons or to crime scriptures. They are life to me. There are certain things that have intrigued me about the book of Job. One of it is the ability, hear me, the ability to invoke God and then God comes down. How did Job do it? Did he use a magic formula? Is it not in your Bible? Job summoned God and the king of kings and the lord of lords showed up. Right now we use all kinds of instruments and waste time for days. We say we are trying, let's call down the presence of God. Job, a man in his pain said, Lord, I demand a meeting with you. Man, Brothers and sisters, what you know can make you look like a god upon the surface of the earth. Hmm. Who is God speaking to tonight? It's time to rise up. There is a new status. There is, there is, there is an enlargement in the spirit. God wants to give you capacity to reign experientially. Oh, I sense the presence of God, strong and mighty in this place. And Job refused. And then another meeting was held in heaven. And Satan said, I, I have an explanation as to why Job didn't curse you. Because he's still healthy. He said, every man can give thanks. It's not unusual. That means as I went around the earth, I saw those I afflicted, but I left their help and they still gave thanks. He said, touch his body. God said, really? All right. Go ahead and touch his body. A man was minding his business and a baller came out. Are you seeing that those boils? Hold on. Those boils, where did they come from? 
they were direct. It was based on an instruction. Like a text message you send and it will go to the person you sent it to. Job just found out that boils and blisters were coming out of his body. And his wife said, this is it. I've tried for you. We have, after all, we've had plenty of children. So if it's faithfulness, I have proven that I'm faithful. It's time to go curse God and die. She wasn't sick. She did not know that it was not because she was standing strong. But she was not part of the meeting. The, the discussion was not about her. There are so many people who have not received any attack from darkness. They think it's because their spiritual life is strong. The day your file is open, you will see how weak you are. They laugh at others. Hold on. I'm very serious tonight. They are lazy. They don't pray. They don't fast. They say, I'm not praying. I'm not fasting. I'm not doing anything. But the devil would dare not touch me. Hold on. In the book of Job, there was a discussion. Nothing happened to the wife of Job. She didn't become barren. She, she was standing close to a man with a disease that could contact her, but nothing happened. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? And then, when Job's body was sore, dogs came to lick his body. The Bible tells us that there were certain people that came from different territories of greatness. And they sat down for seven days. They were using the wisdom that made them great to analyze what, what law would have been violated to make God judge a man like that. And for seven days, they were brainstorming. After seven days, they looked and said, Kai, Job, you sinned. We, we have checked everything. You sinned. Job said, don't talk like that about me. God will curse you. Better keep, if you don't know what to say, and Elihu reserved himself. Elihu was still checking. He said, ah, ah, the law of creation, the mystery of longevity, what law did Job break? This way, other people were just moving around. Ah, Job, sorry. But others said, no, let's check these laws. See, brothers and sisters, there is light that makes you different. Other people looked at the heavens and said, why is today bright? The wise men said, no way. Something is happening in the earth realm. Something is happening somewhere. And they started tracing it. Other people were saying, please, so let's dry the clothes very fast. Whereas salvation had come. In Herod's palace, the spirit of the Antichrist communicated quickly. He said, another king has been born. Herod, do something about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. When Jezebel, I told you that Jezebel is a system, isn't it? That's the she goddess, the system, the antichrist system. Jezebel was married to Ahab. The spirit came into her. Why? Because Ahab represented governance. And she knew it was a mountain that held relevance. So she occupied there and she was practically the one ruling. Are you getting my point? And Jezebel swore when she heard that they destroyed the prophets of Baal. She said, Elijah, I must remove your head. Elijah went up to heaven. Now the spirit of Elijah came in John the Baptist. Jezebel re-entered Herodias again. Are you seeing? And that head of John the Baptist, she got it. That was why when they birthday down, she said, no, there is a score. He knows. There is such ignorance in the earth, man. We walk around. It's not our fault. It's the fault of all of the pastors, apostles, prophets, all of us that claim that we are men of God because we are stewards. The Bible tells us of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. When God calls you, can you have it amplified? Is it possible? Yes. Please, if you are in ministry, don't be in a hurry to rush or go on air. Are you getting my point now? 
many of us are in a hurry. I want to go for a radio program and say what? Make sure you have something to say. He says, so then, let us apostles be looked upon as ministering servants of Christ. And what? Trustees of the mysteries, the secret purposes of God. That means when God calls you, your call tilts you in a position in the spirit where you have an advantage of access to the mysteries of the kingdom. And if God blesses you with a congregation and you are wasting their time, telling them a lot of junk and jargons, the Bible says you are not a steward of the mysteries. And I refuse to allow you to be ignorant. You will be empowered with light. So when men are running, like the nation of Israel, away from Goliath, you will run to Goliath like David. David knew something bigger than a little stone. David knew something. He had, he understood something. There is something you must know that can make you bold. That a man will look at you and say, do you know I can sack you from this walk? <laughs> you don't just do this foolish Pentecostal laugh, we laugh and they still sack you. You are laughing without revelation. We do stupid things in the body of Christ. Ah, God forbid you will not sack me. The next day, you are collecting the letter and you are going out. And you come and meet the pastor that taught you whatever he taught you. And he says, what happened? You mean they sacked you? It's an embarrassment to redemption. Well, it has happened. But Elijah was a man of like passion like us. The Bible says, and he prayed earnestly that there may not be rain. How can one man didn't consult with the geographers, didn't consult with anybody, did not even use a public address system. He just said, on the strength of what I know, I understand that this territory has been given unto me as an ambassador, and I speak higher. This will come when men will speak. We will speak when we have something to say, not just to make noise. Men will come. Look, let me tell you something times will come when the church will determine the events in Africa and determine the, the events across this nation. It's not to get money from politicians because you see the Shunammite woman was a very wealthy woman and when the prophet came he said what should I do to you? He said should I talk to the governor? That means Elisha was not a small man. He could summon the governor. Say you know what happened for you to sit down there. Are you ready to listen or you are ready to follow those who are disobedient just like you. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when our own obedience is complete. Hallelujah. One of our, one of our workers was sharing with me this afternoon a very touching testimony. He went on IT. He's still on IT. Brothers and sisters, as an IT student, First and foremost, there were two places that were paying him some very interesting amounts. When he told me, I was very surprised. That's the first miracle. Second miracle is that when he went there, the owner of the company where he was, he was doing his IT said he wanted his son to be the manager of the place. And since the son is not available, he should come and be managing the place. You want a job. The question is, what do you know? How do men get jobs? What have you been taught that brings a job? Application, submit your CV, wait. Is that true? Could it be that what you know is not the truth? That a thing has existed for a long time does not mean it is the truth. Listen, we need to begin to probe the foundation, the things that make up our ideologies. Start asking questions. Don't just absorb anything like that. Start asking questions. Why must that growth disappear and appear? It is in your body, but it is not within your control. Is violating a law. Already, it tells you that is demonic. How can some, because everything in your body should grow at the same rate. 
Now, this growth is not growing at the same rate. So, which life is sponsoring it? You did biology. Something else must be sponsoring that supernatural growth. It took you 20 years to look the way you are. It takes three days for a boil to come out like that. But when you are not interested in probing it, and it does not cause you to go to the secret place and say, Lord, what meaneth these things? I'm tired of allowing things to just pass. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something? I refuse to live my life based on guesswork. It's a terrible way to live. Brothers and sisters, I have a question for you. What is the guarantee that you are going to celebrate Christmas this year? Look at me. What is the guarantee? Is there, is there a spiritual principle that can give you some kind of assurance? Or do we just walk and whatever will be, will be? I know this is challenging and I don't mean to hurt anyone, maybe of the demise of your loved ones, but I'm, I'm encouraging you. What is the guarantee that you're not going to celebrate? See, let me tell you. Many of us have not confronted these issues. We've, we've forgotten about it and we've run away. When you run away from a thing, you have not defeated it. When you stand and face it and triumph over it. Hallelujah. Man of God, what gives you assurance that your ministry will keep growing from glory to glory? See, people have been saying they like me. Hey, people, you, you better, you better find an authentic revelation. Because one moment they said crucify him. I mean, they said he gave us bread. We will force him to be king. The next moment they said crucify him. Can my life be so in order? Huh? When you pray for the sick, what gives you guarantee that they will be healed? Your pastor told you, lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. You saw him lay hands and they were healed. You say, me too, I will do it. Is that it? Or hands were laid on me and they say, you will now have the healing anointing. Is that it? I'm probing our convictions. And you will find out that many of us are not standing on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. What happens to you when they suddenly look at you? And listen, some of us come from territories where witchcraft is very open. What happens? When you go maybe to your village or somewhere, for God's sake, please listen to me. And somebody looks at you and says, Pastor Femi, you will not get married. This is an agreement we have had. What do you do? And I say, I'll show them. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Let's not be childish this night. What will you do? What revelation, what key will be ignited? If someone, if I meet you now, Jimmy, and I say, you are 10 koinonia. You say, yes, I even heard you sing. And I said, sorry. I've been going to a native doctor all my life. Please, here's the charm he gave me. Help me and break it. Take. What are you going to tell him? Book for counseling. Don't just laugh. I hope you get what I'm telling you. We are the light of the world. We are a city that is set on a hill. Break, help me, destroy this charm. I'm tired of it. And you hear that the last person who really held it died. That's when everybody says, you know, the way this world is, wisdom is profitable to direct. All these kinds of scriptures that emerge out of fear. All right, look up. What gives you confidence huh? that 
they are not plotting an evil plot to kill you this night. Is it impossible? I'm, see, I'm not making you afraid. I'm teaching you how to be victorious. Many of us think by running away from this, say, don't think about these things. I refuse to think about I know that the Bible says, set your mind on things above. But Jesus, is, he, is it not your Bible where death, he said, oh death, I'm talking to you. Where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? If you cannot confront, see, eternal life is not life after death. Eternal life is authority and victory over death. There are many things we cannot confront in the body of Christ. As I'm talking now, some of you are saying, please, so allow me to get home safely first before you say all of this. What revelation did Jesus have that made him sleep when the boat was physically almost capsizing? How do you know whether your roommate has Ebola or not? Is it not till doctors say the person has it? How do you know? How do you know? Maybe since last year you have been passing those who had it. Look at this. A madman eats from the trash can. They teach us that it is not healthy. Abi, answer me. Is it not true? You spent how many years studying that reality? They thought if you eat, there are all kinds of microorganisms. A madman comes to sit and turns the dustbin upside down. And he helps himself all through that night and gets up, cleans his body and moves. While cold, you are in your room. You are lying down. And the cold, you have to add jacket and blanket. The madman is talking to himself and just strolling on barefoot. Rain is just beating him and he's looking up and laughing. And you're saying, oh boy, this poor man. And the man is laughing back at you. Correct? And after three months, that guy is still healthy and strong. They say that there's crisis everywhere. They are running, the guy is moving around and talking nonsense. And the crisis will finish, the guy is still moving around. Question, who is really mad? This guy, because there is no hope of getting sick. There's no hope of even treating him. You will see him enjoy himself, he will leave the wound there. Flies disturbing it, you will leave it there, the wound will heal by itself. No, no, nothing. Could it be that there is something we have learned that has given the devil advantage over us? Could it be that there is something we have been taught that if we did not know it, we would not be this fearful? Technology has increased our fear because it has opened us to the possibilities that exist in this realm. You watch a movie and all of a sudden you just realize that cabbage can kill. You never knew. You ate cabbage, you stole it, you went to people's farm, you looted their products, nothing happened. Now you watch the movie where cabbage killed somebody and you said, this is it. This is it. Hear me, don't just laugh. I'm, I'm probing our convictions. It's time to ask questions. Not to be a rebel, but to ask questions. Everybody marries at 35. I mean, too, I grew up and I saw it like that. I, wouldn't you ask questions? I say, no problem, I'm 22. People served in church. They married at 37. You have not asked questions why they still serve and that happened. Could it be that your generation or your lineage is crying for a savior? And saying, Lord, will you not raise somebody? And God says, you come for koinonia. There is something you must know that will equip you. You need to stamp it at the devil somewhere. Oh, the beauty of light. All of a sudden, you step home and you tell them, I brought good news. You see why the gospel is called good news? What have we been giving people? Bad news. All sorts of bad news. That means what we are preaching is not the gospel. Hallelujah. And you step home and you look at a lady who has not been married and you tell her, I'm not only going to pray for you, I will tell you what is wrong. It's not about you are a prophet. It's spiritual intelligence has made you prophetic. Hallelujah. Knowledge opens up the prophetic dimension in everyone. 
and so you look and you say sister there are certain truths you need to know and when you know you will walk out of this and you begin to share those truths and as you share you will see the power of God last week I think there was a gentleman that they brought they had been the one I announced they had been on my case with that guy I heard the guy was on a bike minding his business I don't know which corner he entered one demon just fell on his head the guy started speaking nonsense at once no negotiation it's amazing how the devil does not consult with us to try to afflict us and this gentleman the family members were confused and all of that and I said come for koinonia and after the meeting I didn't even know because I kept announcing you know and we're about going and they, they brought the guy I said sit down there when I saw him I said my friend you are going to be delivered now I was not asking him a question I was not trying to say, do you have faith? Is your faith working? What size? Is it weak faith or strong faith? All I know is that that demon is leaving. Period. Period. When you truly have money to give somebody and he asks you for money, you will say, can your hand stretch well or small? Are you ready to take? Take. When you start giving excuses and say, hey, there's, I'm expecting, you know, there's one, this is my uncle, the way this Nigeria is. All those long stories are they are trying to point to one thing. There's no money in your pocket. It's as simple as that. This is how it is spiritually. When we begin to give a lot of excuses and stories, it's a sign that we have not held on to something solid. Oh, that God will make you a savior. This is what this is all about. Brothers and sisters, that God will make you a savior. Forget about the challenges today. Are you getting my point? Don't feel bad. Forget about it. But you tell yourself, I have paid this price once and for all. I said something last week and let me say it again. There has been this new discovery that has been stopping a lot of weddings, right? SS and AS. Are you aware of that? Lover boy, are you aware? Are you aware that this can jeopardize your destiny? That is not just enough to be in love. Are you aware of the implications, the questions you will be asked? I was told a very pathetic story of one guy who honestly had been seeing a sister. This guy had prayed. He was so convicted. He was so happy. And they went out on their first date. He was so happy. And then the lady told him, I think whether I'm SS or something, and said, this is the reality. And the guy said whether he was AS or this. You see, it's a little issue. But now I have your attention. Because there are many of us that are probably asking this question. Is this how my life will be? But there is a way out. If you don't believe there is a way out, we don't deserve to call God God. There is a way out. Oh, there is a way out. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more. The scripture I just read says that we have been called into the fellowship of these mysteries. That means the scrolls have been unlocked, access has been given to us. Go and find out what it takes to reign. Listen, revelation is not knowing what God has said. Revelation is making it, knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. It's not just what God has said. It's knowing how to make it work in your life. Knowing how to make it work in your life. Imagine that with the revelation you have now, after this meeting, you will run. Run to a clinic where you know that somebody that you have been praying and trusting God for. Huh? Who has been praying and say, well, this is God that brought this thing. And you just tell him, no, I've discovered something new. And I have come to prove it to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, arise from this hospital. And all of a sudden, Joshua Selman was not there. Your HOD was not there. But the God you serve was there. And you will watch that person get up. And your name is brother. So, 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 and so. 
and all of a sudden you you go back see there is a joy when the word works for you not that it is made to work for you when you provoke it and you come with a testimony you know that the word of god is alive when you pray for someone and the person says do you know i didn't even tell you the gravity of what i was suffering it's like look at the gentleman who was speaking this is a growth. A growth is not something you lie about. For those of you who don't believe in miracles, how do you fake a growth? You can fake like many of you think we men of God around do. You can fake that, okay, genotype changed. But do you fake a baby? How do you fake that a woman was barren and now is holding a baby? How do you fake that somebody could not walk and is now standing? There are mysteries. Everyone said there are mysteries. And I'm planting a hunger in every one of us to begin to explore the mysteries of the kingdom. Oh, there are mysteries. When it was time to judge the prophets of Baal, Elijah said, let us go to a mountain. He, he said, no, 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 no. There is a mystery we must invoke. Let's go to a mountain. And Bell said, I know what you are going. I know where you are going. I will meet you there. Other people were saying, why are they going? The ignorant ones always remain in the valley. Those who have knowledge climb the mountain. When they got there, he said, this is how we do it. You invoke Bell and I'll give you enough time. Brothers and sisters, they started calling on Baal. The Bible says they started cutting themselves. What did they understand about sacrifice and the presence of a God? They were cutting themselves to, to produce blood. They wanted blood to come out because they knew that blood is a language. It's a magnet in the spirit. They Look at how they were walking a lot of spiritual laws. And Elijah was laughing. He said, I know what you are trying to do. I'm sure Baal is sleeping. If you were the one, will you be laughing? Or you'll be praying and say, Lord, let this thing not happen the same way it's happening. I, I, don't disgrace me here. On the strength of spiritual knowledge, a man was laughing at the devil. When it was time, he said, uh uh, there is a protocol to spiritual things. We don't do things foolishly. Let me have 12 altars. Ah, the Spirit of God said, a man of intelligence. Somebody would have just said, let me now show you. Oh God, and you, we do all kinds of things, and the devil said, this is it. He said, let me have 12 altars. And when there were 12 altars, he set up everything. Ah, he said, so that you don't think that we manufactured fire, pour water. The foolish people were pouring water. They did not know that there is a mystery of the spirit, the water, and the blood. The Bible says when it comes to the earth, these three entities can open any door. It says there are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the word and what? The father, the spirit and the word. But it says when it comes to the earth, there are three elements. Their coexistence will open any door. It says the spirit, the water and the blood. And Elijah said pour water. They were foolishly pouring water. When they finished, he said, oh God. And see the fire that came? The Bible says the fire came and licked up everything. Elijah said, chase them. Kill every single one of them. When he killed them, Jezebel had it. What law was operated? What law? Who is this guy? And suddenly she realized that Elijah was not a normal human being. And Elijah said, I'm done. I came to judge this she goddess called Jezebel. Because her prophets prospered. And the prophets of God were in hiding. But one man was bold. Although there were many prophets, they couldn't come out. They were hiding. Elijah was taking fresh air. They came to disrupt him. He said, fire. Next, fire. The third people said, we, we are begging you. It's not like we are forcing you. We are begging you. We left our wives at home. We are begging you. Everybody say mysteries. Same mysteries. The occultic realm and witchcraft manipulate people through mysteries. Are you getting my point now? They use spells. 
they use enchantments. They don't need to see you. They make pronouncements. And when they make those pronouncements, when it comes, if there is darkness in you, it will prevail. Because they are called rulers of darkness. That means their, their dominion is activated when there is darkness. They are called rulers of darkness. But when they come and they see light, see, all this, I am uncursable, I am unkillable. You better understand the mysteries of the kingdom that activates those realities in your life. Because although you have been claiming and jumping, look at your life. It's already happening. I'm not scaring you. I'm telling you that there is more than what we have been taught. And brothers and sisters, if you do not open your eyes to see, you may not reign in life. There are many churches. There are many pastors struggling. I want crowd. I want this. I want that. And they do not know that there are mysteries in the kingdom. The Bible says, listen. It says, if I be lifted up. Have you read that scripture? Huh? Emoji, let me give you a little clue. If I be lifted up. When a man of God keeps lifting himself, get ready for empty pews. He says, if I be lifted up, I will what? Draw all men unto myself. Not unto a man of God. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. When you keep drawing men to yourself, you will find out that there is very little you can give them. But when you draw men, when, when, when you reflect Christ, you stand as an ambassador, God himself. The Bible says, and God added daily to them as many as should be saved. Paul can plant. Apollos can water, but increases exclusively of God. Hallelujah. Tell me, what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Tell me, what can I do? I can live without you. Listen, do you know that your family is under bondage? Because there is a mystery that has not been unlocked. Listen, listen, listen. There are mysteries are like spiritual codes of operations. I've shared it again during our series on mysteries of the kingdom. But I'll say it. Mysteries are like codes of operation. Look at me. If you have a drug, right? Just give me a viral cup or anything that I can use. If this is a drug, please look at me. Pharmacist. I'm not a pharmacist, so forgive me. Whether what I'm saying is right or wrong, let's just accept it. Are you getting my point now? In the making of this drug, certain things have been programmed. This drug is like a machine. Is that true? You don't look at it and say, Panadol, don't by any means go to my leg. I'm okay there. The trouble is by this side of my head. Better find a way of positioning yourself and sub what is there. No. No. You pick it up, carry water, close your eyes, Throw it in your mouth and take water. You smile. You go back. The Panadol has been programmed to look for what is wrong. Because even you, you don't know what is wrong. You, are, you only know what you feel is wrong. Is that true? So when you go to a doctor, he looks at you and he says, Doctor, I, I don't know what is it. My eyes, he says, it's not eyes. He says, I'm, I'm the one going through it. I'm telling you, he says, it's not your eyes. Just keep quiet. Take this, take that. And after two days, you come and say, ah, ah doctor have been i started giving myself medication for the past one week the eyes the pain has even increased say who asked you it was not eye problem it's the symptom of something else listen mysteries are like spiritual programmings. when they come into your territory it's like an atomic bomb they open up and they begin those codes start writing themselves upon your family so there could be mysteries that invoke barrenness. Listen to me. There could be mysteries that invoke academic failure. There could be mysteries that invoke late marriage. 
these mysteries ascend through whatever spiritual means. Dreams, enchantments. It says, in six things shall he deliver you. Yes, seven things. It says, you shall be delivered from the scourging tongues of men. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So this code lands like an alien and it begins to type out in your family that which it was programmed to do. Because mysteries work like the word of God. It's a mimicking. I told you that Satan was called what? Lucifer, the light bearer. He was the one who kept the revelations of the spirit. No word returns to the sender until it accomplishes what it was returned. If for any reason it returns to the sender, a higher word sent it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it says, so shall my word be that proceeded forth from my mouth. It shall not return. Hallelujah. It's like an SS1 student who tells a junior student, go and fetch water. And an SS3 student says, go and sleep. Who will he obey? If the SS1 student says, I sent you, he said, mm -mm, no, please. My school father said, I should go and sleep. I'm going to have my siesta. The SS1 student is now, he has joined two of them. Is that true? The integrity of the SS3 student and the SS1 student is what will be. And he said, I will punish you in front of this one to let you know I'm your senior. Or you kneel down. You go and fetch the water and give the junior student and he will use. That's a way of humiliating him to establish his seniority. Hallelujah. Mysteries. Everyone say mysteries. There are many well-meaning Christians. Hear me. Who are victims of the unlocking of mysteries. Someone comes and matches a charm. Brothers and sisters. This person is returning maybe from church. With your Bible. From choir practice. Huh? You didn't see anything on, on the ground. That shows that there is a charm. But you stepped on it. The charm has been programmed. He said, anybody's leg that steps on you is the person who said. And you step on it without light. And all of a sudden, you are minding your business and you see another law walking in your members. What is going on? Suddenly your leg, you can't tell again. Ha -ha. The last time I checked, my leg was fine. What is going on? You get up the next day times two. The size. Next day times three. And they go to the hospital and they say, Kai, there's nothing. Doctors now already know. They are tired of the devil. Thank God for what God is doing in hospitals. Many doctors now, when they look at your case, they say, look, I'm advising you. If you know a man of God that is anointed, find him quickly. Because where you are lying down here, three people came, same condition. Thank God for doctors that are spirit-filled. Hallelujah. There are families like that. Brothers and sisters, I'm not the kind of person that sees demons in everything. There are principles. We're intelligent people. But I will deceive you if I tell you evil is not real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I would have, I would have jeopardized the integrity of my calling. This is why many of us go through all kinds of cycles of a lot of things. Brothers and sisters, hear me. When you find yourself in trouble, if you find yourself in a hole, you can't bring yourself out. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That was the light that came to them. And then he said, arise and shine for your light. Not because you can sit down there forever. But he says, when your light comes, then you will arise. Tonight, someone's, how many minutes do we have? I'll minister for a few more minutes and then we'll, I'll take time and we'll minister to the sick. Is that, is that alright? I know that there are people who are trusting God for healings. I'm not the kind of man of God that will say, now, after hearing this message, I hope that as you go back home, do something about it. No, no. Something must be done now. I'm not teaching you to start insulting people and just laugh and say this man is not powerful because we are all laboring to enter that rest in reality. Listen, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, hear me please, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
gives us access. Our operating these kingdom principles bring us, it is us taking advantage. Hear me? When you walk in these principles, you are not trying to do something else outside of what Christ has done. It is your partnership with him. You're taking advantage of the access to make it real in your life. Are you getting my point now? Because that's where I understand that there can be confusion. A lot of us have believed that, okay, Jesus have done it. I believe it and I've said so. But I'm not seeing anything in my life. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, it says, If thou sh it shall come to pass in that day, thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day, that this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you. Listen, the Bible tells us again and again that we do not yet see all things under his feet. Please get this. Our walking the word of God is not trying to add to what Christ has done. Our walking the word of God is our response of obedience. Are you getting my point now? It is our proof of faith to make alive that truth. There are laws in the kingdom that were there before the fall of man. I hope you know. Job, I want to come have time, but let me show you something interesting. Let's go to the book of Job. Hallelujah. 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 Job 38, behold, I show you a mystery. This that I'm about to read happened way, hear me, it happened way before Genesis 1. Job 38, okay. Job, through whatever spiritual mystery I really do not know, but he invoked the presence of God. Then the Lord answered Job out of what? A whirlwind. You see that it was the same whirlwind with the chariots of fire that came and carried Elijah. And said, verse 2, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Who is this that is talking? Job, you are making a lot of noise. I've been listening to you from heaven. You've been saying so many things. You are ranting. Job, I want to speak to you now. Verse 3. Guard up your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. I want to talk to you using my knowledge as God, and I want you to answer me if you think you have knowledge of that much mystery. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the word? That's question 1. So God tells us the earth has foundation. Geography tells us it's revolving in space. God said, uh-uh. There is a spiritual mystery. A day, this earth is like a building. What kind of eyes will you see that will turn a God shape into a building? Declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who laid the measures? That means there was an architect. It was an intentional thing. The earth was measured. It has dimensions. Or who had stretched the line, like the plumb line you use upon it. Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations fastened? Like a tent. Or who laid the cornerstone? Verse 7. This God is telling Job that were you dear when the morning stars sang together, the day the earth foundation was laid, there was a thanksgiving and foundation laying ceremony. 
way before your arrival. This is what happened in the heavens. The morning stars sang together and all the what? I've said, I've said it again and again. Sons of God is not a New Testament concept. It has been there since. Sons of God is not a name. It's an office. Who shut the sea with doors? Brothers and sisters, that means the seas you see, they have spiritual doors. So when we see flooding, we know that a law was activated that opened those doors in the spirit. This is what God is telling us. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as just flooding anyhow. There are people by acts of divination, they have inquired in the archives of spiritual things. When it break forth, as if it issued out of the womb. Verse 9. When I made the cloud a garment and thick darkness a swaddling blood for it. Verse 10. And break up for my decreed place and set bars and doors. God made a decree and said, Sis, make sure you remain here. And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. And here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Let's stop there. I just wanted to show you. When did this happen? And what? when this thing happened, Job kept quiet. Job said, wow. Wow. You see why the people worship God? Because heaven is a place of perpetual revelation. God surrounds himself with mysteries. So, the mystery you saw before you bowed down when you stand up is not what you will see again. It's like these lights. The way these lights change, that's how the mysteries around God, they are so many, they keep changing. And so in the book of Ezekiel, we see men saying holy. In Revelation, they are still saying holy. They've not stopped. They are saying holy is not that that's their work. They pay them salary for it. No. It is a response they are not even aware that that long a time had come and gone. Brothers and sisters, hear me. There are mysteries in this kingdom. Say it. There are mysteries. In many parts of this nation, every time they kill men, the people in those territories become richer. What do they know about blood and money? A man of God wrote a powerful book, Blood Money. Let me tell you the truth. Every money is blood money. Every. Whether blood of Jesus or blood of whatever. Every money is blood money. Are you learning something? I'm not just teaching you this so that you will have theological knowledge. And say wow I have something. But it is to sponsor your hunger for spiritual things. So that when men look at you and say ah, ah Pastor Femi you are already healing the sick what are you looking for you say what am i looking for paul said that i may know him when paul at the apex of his ministry saw that there was so little he knew he said that i may know him that i may know him in five minutes i will show you something that the fasting tonight has done for you because it's a mystery Fasting is a mystery in the spirit that has not been taught because of the effect it has. We have not been taught that it is part of our spiritual growth process. I want to see you. Isaiah 58. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. Isaiah 58. I want to know you more. Sila bakuradu shila bariyanana. I want to know you. I want to know. Verse 6. Verse 6. Isaiah 58, verse 6. 
Is not this the fast that I have chosen? That means not every fast carries weight in the spirit. There are some fastings that are religiosities that have no power backing them and it's just dead religion. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it says there is a kind of fast that God has chosen. Is this not the kind of fast that I have chosen? He said to lose the what? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to do what? To let the oppressed. The word let here is to permit them. That they will go free. And that you break what? To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. So it is in this kind of fast that you lose the bands of wickedness. In your fasting, you activate a law that strengthens your faith, kills unbelief. I truly believe that fasting primarily addresses one major issue, and that's unbelief. It opens you up, your organs of interaction with the spirit. All of a sudden, all the possibilities in God are the possibilities in you. There is a relationship between food your body and this realm that's why gluttony is a sin gluttony is not fornication so why why is it a sin lost for food the same way a man has lost for a woman someone has lost but his own oh, no, is not a woman is for food even if he has eaten he can hold the bread and lie down and sleep like that that is gluttony that's the kind of case that requires deliverance fast Hallelujah. Because, see, excessive food does something to your spirit man. It's like a meter. There is a level to which your eating becomes healthy. It keeps your body. Afterwards, it's like the law of diminishing returns. It's like, it's like you are inverting your spirit. Are you seeing that now? Because you see, your, your spiritual growth is inversely proportional to your flesh. Two of them cannot grow at the same time. Huh? So, when one is growing, the other one must bow. And part of that is achieved in fasting. When you fast and you pray and you declare the word with understanding and spiritual intelligence, you edify yourself. You activate certain things. To lose the bands. That means wickedness has a rope. Hello? It has a rope. Tying down families. Many of us are, are victims of the bands of wickedness. Like the hands of Samson. A great warrior but tied down. And nothing could be done about it. He said to undo what? Heavy burdens. A luggage that you inherited. You, they gave birth to you in the middle of a spiritual discussion that has nothing to do with you. And like Simon of Cyrene, you just received a luggage on your head you cannot explain. It says, to let the oppressed go free. Listen, there are, there are different kinds of captivity. But there are certain people, the Bible calls them lawful captives. Captives who are in captivity legally. It says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend. I don't know if you need peace in your life but it's not just going to come by crossing your legs you must engage spiritual keys it says and i will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever you bind whatsoever you cast 
keys of access. Verse 8. Let's read together. Then shall what? So fasting is a mystery that accelerates revelation. He said, then shall your light break forth. There is something God has been trying to reveal to you. There is a spiritual understanding that steps up your stand in the spirit. But it's been limited. The weight of food and the weight of, of laziness. This inertia that comes with this body. And when you fast, you ease yourself. The Bible says your light breaks forth as the morning. And your health shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. And then the glory of the Lord shall be your what? Reward. It shall be your reward. You will see greater glory upon your life. Greater glory. Physically, in ministry, in life. You begin, that's, see, that's why some people go from strength to strength. When you think they have exhausted everything, they come up with a new dimension. Let me show you one last mystery. What's the time now? Isaiah 40. Let's just look at that finally. We hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land All we want Is you Verse 28, please let's hurry up Isaiah 40 from verse 28 I want to teach you a very powerful principle For those of you who have not listened to the teaching Secrets of sustained glory, please get it There's nothing as painful As looking at a man And say he once was powerful he once was anointed. This guy used to have a flourishing ministry. God was alive in his midst. No, it should not be. May you never have the testimony of Ichabod in your life. That the glory has departed. No. Has thou not known? When God begins to probe a man like this. Then he wants to reveal something he has not known. Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God. The Lord. The creator of the ends of the earth. He does what? Number one. He does not have this characteristic in himself. That means he does not have the ability to faint. There is a mystery encapsulated in his person. That cannot permit this deficiency. He says neither is he weary. There is nothing called tiredness. Because it is hope deferred that makes the heart weary. His word is yea and amen. There is no postponing so he does not know weariness. He says and there is no searching of his understanding. So he gives us certain things. Number one, mankind can faint. The word faint is to be fatigued, to be tired. We can be weary when what you hope for does not come when the marriage does not come as when you want it are you hearing me when the admission or the graduation it is natural hear me it is not a spiritual deficiency as it were it's part of the predicament that comes with wearing this body but there is a technology in the spirit and this is what i want to teach you it says he giveth what that means there is a supply in the spirit that can bring power to you when you faint and to those who have no might, he can increase like a meter. He can increase strength. Hallelujah. Next verse. Even what? I hope you know the Bible says the glory of the young people is their strength. So when the strong ones grow weary, it's a sign that we are limited. The youth shall faint. That means in your Christian experience, listen to me. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how blessed you are, a time can come in your life on the strength of the physical happenings in your life. This possibility.
can be true of you. That you can fail. Hallelujah. You trusted God for a great CGPA. You saw five points in your dream. When you went to check it, you saw 1.7. You said, Lord, which, what is this again? I've already packaged my Thanksgiving offering. I thought it was five points. What is, who is confusing me here? And then, you may be a man of God, but at this time, it will touch you. Are you hearing me? When you hear that your loved one that you have been praying for finally died, the Bible says, even the youth shall faint. And be wary, and young men shall utterly fall. That's why you hear certain people just sit down and you hear them talk and you're like, sister, are you not born again? Say, see, if God doesn't help me, well, lie. whoever comes, I don't care who, I will shall marry and we'll flog it out when we get married. It's not like the person is not a Christian. This is what is happening. Are you getting my point? Don't criticize people when you see them fainting and Jesus wept. He wept because he took this body and it grieved him. Jesus was hungry and he was staggering and when he came to a fig tree, he wanted to plug it and there was no food and he was angry. He caused the fig tree because when you wear this body, you can faint. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Physical fatigue, emotional fatigue when your hope is postponed. You are trusting God for the job and someone said, um, you will hear from me. Maybe in two weeks time. And you've waited for nine years. No job. Everybody keeps seeing you and say, ah, you should be a, a director now, Abby. And you're even embarrassed. Yes, I'm a director by faith. Please don't, don't embarrass me here. Must you laugh at me? That's the kind of testimony that some of us have. But let me tell you something. This is the technology. Hi-ya. When you get to this state in the spirit, when it looks like you are about to go down, it says, but they, that means not everybody is interested, but they that wait upon the Lord. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. If you're a man of God here, let me teach you a secret. Otherwise, one day you will sit before your congregation and start crying. I don't know how many messages I preach in a week. I travel all the time I'm on, I'm on the road and there are all kinds of expectations every territory that invites me they are happy they listen to the messages they go and invite people and there is you see the anointing is like the anointing is, is as if you have holes in your body are you getting me you become a conductor of the anointing and it tells on your body that's why when you leave your body and you come back you feel weak right so Virtue, that concept of virtue going out is real. Many people have not felt it because they are not anointed. They feel the same way from the beginning of the service. They didn't bless anybody, nothing left. But when they touched Jesus, he felt something. He said, who touched me? Ah, it created an effect. Because there are times you are standing on stage and you will receive the pain of somebody. For that small moment, you will feel that pain. And your body will respond. Where is this one coming from? The Holy Ghost said, no, no, no. This is a word of knowledge. But your body is still going to suffer that predicament. So by the time the service is done, a lot has left you. You've preached all of the messages. And then another message is coming and the people say, man of God, we saw in a vision you were doing great things. And you're saying, oh God. One day, you will just fall down and just die. Because you will preach every message. You will now check and say, now which one? Faith, they had it last year. Uh, <laughs> see, those who are pastors are laughing. Because they know what happens every Saturday. Saturdays are the most stressful days for men of God. And uh, uh, they are meeting this because they are there sweating. They are wondering. You go to someone.com, nothing. The heavens are closed. You go to all kinds of things. 
you try to listen to a man of God's message, you remember that, ah, you shared that thing already and you are, you are now wondering and say, oh Lord. Don't let that become part of your life. There is a technology. They that wait. It's a system. It's a mystery. It is a day, day that shout and do stupid things around the presence of God. They that, what do you understand? A waiter, huh? when you go to a very correct restaurant, what a waiter does is that he just stands waiting for your order. Right? They that come into his presence and say, Lord, if you don't help me, there is no help. And phone calls are ringing, man of God, we are calling to remind you that God is going to use you. You keep those things and say, Lord, this is why I'm here. I'm here because of these phone calls. There's so much demand upon me. If you don't increase my capacity and help me. You know that song? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up. The first thing that happens to those who wait upon the Lord is that they shall renew. It's like the charging of a battery. All of a sudden in his presence, God begins to, he fires one revelation that becomes your three-month sermon. One revelation. Hi! I'm, I, it is my testimony. In his presence, all of a sudden, you think every message, you've exhausted everything. And then God gives you an encounter. And you start writing. And you are, sometimes I, I wish I can just organize koinonia every day to just unlock that which is in my spirit. So your strength. Let's try that our song again. We will run and not be weary. I don't know all the stanzas. Da, 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 da. Whatever it is. And his joy will be our strength. And we'll come into his presence. Many of you didn't go to Bible school. We will wait upon the Lord. In His presence, His fullness of joy. And our strength shall be restored. As we Some of you, when they were teaching that song in Sunday school, you were running and scratching people's car and, and stealing money and buying ice cream. When your colleagues were receiving, you were there. They dropped you. Immediately they leave. You now run away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So number one, they shall renew their strength. Physical strength. Spiritual strength. When you see a man five years in ministry, looking as if he has been in ministry for 50 years. Uh, well, you see, where everything is, I just write whether it's there, I can't even remember. And it's, What laziness, inertia. It says they shall renew their strength. Number two, they shall mount up. Mm. Many of us, I don't want to go into the story of the eagle, but you know that there are times that the eagle needs to defeather itself, shed off the old for the new because you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. You cannot tie a new material with an old one. Their strength is not the same. Hallelujah. And so what happens is that in that place of retreat is the shedding off of that level. There is something that leaves you. The weaknesses. God wants to increase the ministry. He needs to increase your faith. He needs to increase your trust. He needs to increase integrity. Many things happen in that secret place. And then you will mount up. All of a sudden, you come up on stage. And whoa, there is a brand new you. When someone is listening to the message and is busy hitting his head, 
then he hears another dimension this is an unending mystery they shall run like elijah elijah told ahab saddle your ass and run don't worry about me there is a technology in the spirit that accelerates my life don't worry you see because when you are staying back in the secret place it looks like you're a fool sometimes you will need to refuse a, a ministration that can honor you greatly is it not you are about to go for a ministration where you know that the honorarium will make you happy and god says stay back there's no true happiness outside of my presence stay back and say lord the last time somebody smiled and wanted to give me a car God said remain there but when you remain there you will run see I'm teaching you a powerful secret that's why when you look you'll be wondering is there anything to e and I there is there anything to koinonia hold on when we wait we will run is it not a mystery in the spirit when you want to run wait he said, when you wait, then truly you will run. Hurry, hurry in life. I want to hurry to do ministry. I want to hurry to be man of God. Bible says, wait. That's how you run. When you wait, then you will run. Jesus Christ was waiting and praying and interacting with the Father. They took the boat and they started going. Six hours they were ahead of him. But they were not making any progress. That's how many people are doing ministry. They are doing ministry as if they call themselves. No proof, no sign, no witness. God doesn't confirm anything. They struggle to confirm everything. I know, come on. There must be a supernatural dimension to your life. There must be a dimension men cannot explain. That's the proof that you are not alone. If you can explain everything about your ministry, you are doing it alone. There must be a supernatural dimension. They shall run and not be. So all of a sudden, Jesus Christ stands up and starts walking on the water. This is Jesus walking on the water. Strength came upon him. And the disciples, he was about passing them. He said, Master, eh? Master, you can't pass us like this. You are seeing what we are going through. Jesus looked at them. They thought he was a ghost and Peter said I like this your technology so there is something like this and you left us struggling with the boat when we can walk brothers and sisters drop moving in the boat and wait so that you can receive their feet to run are you getting me many of us are so slow in our lives we are trying to hurry up and we are living the presence of God and we believe that by living the presence of God you will hurry up in life you are joking that's why a man can start a ministry. After 12 years, the man is alone as if God didn't send him. And they say, anybody you see moving like that, forget it. Uh, something must have been done. Is that true? Learn this. If you don't learn anything, if you want to run in the spirit, wait. I want to hurry up and marry. say let's walk around with you know when they see us wait ah you you think we you think we don't know what you people discuss look let me tell you it's good to let people see you huh but where was ruth when god was fixing her destiny naomi was busy talking to her she was waiting when you find yourself running without a track record of waiting one gentleman sent me a text and he said, man of God, I feel the call. How do I launch out? I replied to him, I said, forget about launching out. Settle down. You see, that's the language. Launch out. In other words, how do I take this thing? The fire that is burning my spirit, nobody knows. The fire of God, if not understood, you can misinterpret that fire to mean that it's a sign to run, whereas it's a sign to refine you. And not be weary. He said, and they shall walk. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 43. That when you are walking, it means there is fire around you. When you walk through the fire. So when you are walking through what is killing others. You are standing tall. And people are saying, what technologies? Uh -uh. I waited until the fourth man arrived. So I'm not alone. 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me and I will. points very quickly two prayer points hallelujah um, there's a family that that got to contact me I don't know if they are here that they, is it a sick person or a, a mad person or someone like that are they around this protocol find out if they're around then we'll just minister fast if they're not around hallelujah praise the Lord Two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer. It says, I will show you. I will not just tell you. I will show you. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower to see what the Lord will say. You're going to say, Oh God. Let the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm tired of ignorance. I'm tired of living my life anyhow. Open up the scrolls of the spirit and grant me access to revelation. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, we are praying now. Shake it, take it, we are praying now. Leke te porakata baladabas. Mande ke prans ke la boko shoto lo ba 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 ba. Shekata balako shoto baladabas. It has been given unto you. Jesus Christ paid the price already. It has been given unto you to know the mysteries, the spiritual codes that govern dominion pray for the sake of your family for the sake of many that you have been anointed to save there are destinies tied to your life don't let them die pray leke koto paratapa there is a mystery that you will know that will stop these spells, these yokes of darkness from your life. Open our eyes, oh God. Open our eyes. Pray. Grant me light. I hate fear. I cause fear. Reveal something to me that takes fear out of my life. Reveal something to me that takes insecurity out of my life. Reveal something to me that stops competition in my life. Let me stand on a solid rock. Koinonia pray. Zeketa ba 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 ba. Rakata pratekate. Zagata pondo koto lobodosh. Zagata brata katele katebos. Sopros kete balaba. Open our eyes to the mysteries of the kingdom. Open our eyes to the operations of spiritual laws. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. You are going to pray. Whether you fasted or not. You are all in the corporate atmosphere. 
you're going to pray and say Lord every band of wickedness over my life please hear me over my family over my loved ones I stand tonight as an ambassador and I declare that enough is enough those bands be broken now lift your voice and pray Come on, lose those bands over my family. I declare I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I confront witchcraft, the system of evil, the system of death. I challenge you as an ambassador. Thus far as you come, no further shall you go. Pray, pray. Your prayer will prevail. Your prayer will prevail. We confront delay. We confront delay. We confront poverty. We confront late marriage. We confront barrenness. We confront terminal diseases. We confront witchcraft, spells, yokes, enchantments, divinations that are carried out in heavenly places. Manda katabosa, reketete bosh, stargazing, necromancy. We challenge those powers. We challenge them. We come as ambassadors. Sons of light. Sons of grace. Sons of power. Shake it Oh, we challenge them. We challenge them. We challenge covens. We challenge spells. We will not be silent. The King of Glory steps into our families. The King of Glory steps into your academics. Enough is enough. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. I tear down the curtains of wickedness. I tear down the bands of evil. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge failure. Challenge delay. Pray. Something is happening in the spirit. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your job. We tear down spiritual walls, limitations. Be broken. Yokes. Be broken. The spirit of the Lord God is upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give me five minutes Hallelujah. and God is going to do something mighty in this place. The devil must let you go. Shake it Oh, he must let you go. Victory is imminent. Man must know that 
There are times because of what God wants to do in your life when he finds out that four people need to be blessed to reach you whether they are praying or not he will hurry them quickly because they are delaying you he will hurry them for your sake when you come for a meeting like this be conscious of four things number one be conscious of every prophetic word that comes relating to your issues of concern be conscious of it when these words come don't think they are just empty speakings the carnal man cannot discern the things of god the word of god is like a tray you have to receive the tray before you receive what is on it are we together now the word of god is a tray it carries miracles carries deliverance carries healings so when you receive the word the engrafted word you now take what is in it be conscious of the prophetic word number two be conscious of the covenant covenant is a very deep spiritual word many people just shout covenant around but they don't even know what it means listen a covenant is a system that commits god and causes him to vow to ensure that a person or an institution continues to receive certain predictable outcomes it's a covenant there is the covenant of answered prayer there is the covenant of god's presence there is a covenant of results every man that god truly calls and every ministry that god truly ordains there are underlying spiritual covenants the platform upon which god put his vow and his integrity that has touching this and this i will make happen it's true also be conscious of the graces you see that the graces that are available within that territory you cannot receive a man's covenant you can only partake of it but you can receive graces you are a pastor you come and your church is grounded you only have 50 members during your annual thanksgiving thank god for that but something is wrong god is a god of increase you can come with hearts open to receive the grace how about hardship things not working well how about your spiritual growth you are at the same level for five years the knowledge of scripture zero health of your prayer life zero you are a man of god and nobody is placing a demand on the grace of god that you have it will frustrate you eventually but there are graces every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace when that grace comes upon your life your result shows thou anointest my head with oil the result shows through my cup he does not anoint your cup he anoints your head your cup proves what is on your head are we together now so this is very important thank you 
and you have to understand the way this works we are going to pray shortly and i need you to know how this works i want you to receive be conscious of the graces not some of you may not need may not need a miracle like miracle from sickness or whatever but understand that when you come it's like an exchange of graces listen the bible says give us please second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly second corinthians 9 and verse 8 praise the lord read with me please koinonia ready one to read stop 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 god is able to make all grace let me explain that to you please all of you come stand anywhere you want to stand just stand anywhere scatter yourself around don't come close to me just stand watch this call these guys graces the grace for prosperity the grace for favor the grace for speed the grace for spiritual fire the grace for influence watch this access to the hearts of men this is you this is your destiny and the bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces not some i can have the grace for prosperity and i'm rich but i suffer but i succeed you are rich but no man helps you because you don't have favor you only have prosperity the proof of favor is not money is the loyalty of men if you do not have access to the hearts of men you don't have favor you may have resources so this guy has prosperity so he will labor wake up in the morning sleep late in the night eat the bread of sorrow mix it with hard work and eventually prosper but as far as spiritual fire is concerned the grace that plants in a man the hunger and the passion for the things of god is not in him so that grace is not there he has some but not all and the part the grace dimension he does not have the deficiency of it will show in his life he is getting richer but not as his soul prospers this is the grace he needs when you pray and intercede for this man now god will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of god that has this dimension so that in addition it will be added to him are we together now now listen very carefully please look up everybody so god is one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of god continues to move like a wind and he scans your life which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have this is one of the biggest miracle that happens in a miracle service most people do not know you sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating it's like a software god finds out that this level you are entering into there are at least 21 graces but as it is there are only four so while the meeting worship is going prayer is going there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands so you come for koinonia miracle service dry nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too because what is around you is a is a report card telling what is on you are we together now you obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love god while you are wealthy if you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth you are leaving god that anointing did not come from this ministry the grace for this ministry has been it has been edited to a covenant to ensure that as men rise their hearts also rise for god not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave god you don't honor anything that has to do with god again no it is as you prosper even as your soul prospers it's babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul watch this so you receive this grace and then the holy spirit finds out grace for what favor come watch this praise and worship you got this one during praise and worship you didn't even know why you felt like falling you just thought that ah the song was so nice something had landed on your head are we together now this is speed hold me now my dear watch this this is what is happening in koinonia you are sitting down but you just know that there is a weight that glory something is coming on you you can't tell you are not even falling 
you are not shouting you will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like i i wish i'm the person falling whereas the holy ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men this is your package for miracle service now you receive this watch this we now share the grace watch this watch this remember you traveled from another nation the uk us kenya wherever and then you just came and at the end of the service satan can even fool you you are from kenya oh i see please sit down madam i see how it's a kenyan uh, god bless you now watch this you can receive this and while you receive it they will share the grace and you will still feel like nothing came on you but you see the exam is not marked in church go out listen please koinonia understand what i teach you and god is able you came for a meeting and you carried this in two days someone who forgot you no listen he does not just remember i've taught you this last week a book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week a strange grace for illumination you think hold on you think is the spirit of revelation it's not revelation is speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and God is able God is able God is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition god gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the lord 10 years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what calls listen one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation To know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray be restoration please bring them out quickly 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 let's save time please in the break to shilakata restoration now i speak it by the spirit the power of god is still coming on people recover recover 
by the spirit recover i stretch my hands recover by the power of prophecy recover recover years lost recover opportunities a paris recover in the mighty name of jesus i decree and declare god is bringing recovery let me tell you you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow i speak to you may that grace come upon you now again recovery 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 restoration i want to take authority over the spirit of delay i'm seeing many people your feet is chained in the spirit you want to make progress but you cannot make progress fire is falling from heaven now i decree and declare inside outside all the overflows anyone under the sound of my voice who is under the influence of the spirit of delay at the count of three may fire from heaven fall upon those chains one two three i break those chains now be free now from delay be free now be free now be free now i will hasten my word to perform it i will not just perform it i will give speed to my word the word is quick and powerful i declare again any family here any individual under the yoke of delay i speak to you by the spirit that yoke is broken now that yoke is broken now broken by the spirit hallelujah now i want to pray please listen i have prayed this prayer and for those of you who have missed it in time past may god grant you the grace to receive it now listen truly speaking there is a grace for speed please hear me a man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of god to be birthed some of you gave your life to christ late already in life it's not enough to rebuke delay you must obtain the grace for speed and watch this i'm about to pray for people now and that anointing is coming on people as usual you will find people running by the spirit but i need to release that anointing father i stand under heaven in this miracle service there are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family that dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year i declare right now let it come upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now speed parush kabarakata speed career speed i give speed to your life speed to ministry receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now speed hello madonna hallelujah mommy please look at me ma don't be embarrassed i don't know you but i'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family where are you coming from madam madam i'm looking at you i'm seeing river state where are you from states. Huh? states river state yes sir the lord says i should tell you that from this night things will change in your life she's your mother help that woman please i'm looking at the lord in the spirit i'm putting my hand inside a river and i'm bringing something out and the lord says the destiny of this family in the name of jesus that's the daughter i command by the spirit every planting that is not of the lord i overturn and i uproot now in the name of jesus christ who is naomi 
I'm hearing a name Naomi. We have to hurry up. I want to pray for the sick. Naomi. Hello, Imadona. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? From where? I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS by the Spirit of the Living God. And I decree and declare, like the Hebrew women, you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say, baby is breached. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus' name. Let me pray. Are you married? You are backing a baby. Where is the baby? I'm looking at you in a vision. That's why I'm saying, how can this? You know, I'm saying, you came to Koinonia. You are backing a baby outside. This is the vision. I'm... You are not getting what I'm saying. Is this? You were backing this baby when I mentioned your case. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Were you backing a baby? Yes, sir. That's why I'm saying, are you married? Because you look too small to be a married woman. This is the real person I want to pray for. Bring this little baby. God is, I don't know whose child is this. Your child. But God, this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. She looks like a little girl. In the name of Jesus. What's her name? Nicole. Nicole. She may not know what we are doing, but we stand in the presence of the people of God. We anoint this lady. May she become a Deborah to her generation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pray for you. Where are you from? Kogi State. I want to pray for you. Huh. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder. Every time I see that, if you are from that locality, the power of God comes on you immediately. In the name of Jesus, I command witchcraft associated with that territory. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young, but you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now, as I speak, overflow too. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come, my dear. The grace that will want to make married men disturb you. Look at me. I come against that spirit now. Not only you. There are five other people I'm seeing. I don't know where they are. 
but in Jesus name there is a like like it like an almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven I lift that negative thing of your life now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I hear the name Magdalene I don't know if Magdalene I want to pray very quickly we have to pray for the sick you are the covenant keeping I'm seeing your feet in mud. In the name of Jesus, I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I speak to this lady. I'm seeing this lady, but all I'm seeing is snakes completely. I declare be free now by the Spirit of the living God. The Bible says now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray for you, my dear grace for you the favor that is on your life i command it to start speaking it will not only be a name that is on you it will speak right now in jesus name your sister your name is magdalene come in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you look at me the lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life these two things shame and reproach shame and reproach shame and reproach please stand up i speak to you by the god of heaven the month of november a big miracle is coming to your life a big miracle i lay my hands upon you and i declare in the name of jesus be free right now why is this girl here this magdalene come my dear i pray for you place your hand on your head I declare, oh God, let this chain be taken now. I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head. Be removed now. Be removed this, like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity. I remove it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody lay your hands on her. So anybody just touch her. Release her now by the spirit of God. There's no place for you. Take everything that belongs to her. Restore it and go. Now. Now please listen. I want to minister deliverance. Please believe it. You may not know. The woman from Kenya. Come. It's time for God to change your life. Please stand up. When did you come here? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday, yes. you came here. God is about to turn your life around. Amen. Glory. You are still coming, and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. Madam, what do you do? Madam, what do you do? I'm a commissioner for human rights. Commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi. Yes. In, in two weeks, I'm going to be in your nation. I would like to see you, Amen. your nation. There is a reason why I'm talking. I'm not seeing you alone. I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for. Yes. But I want to pray for you, madam. Because I don't know if you believe it or not. You have a political destiny. As you are like this, looking at me. You have a political destiny in Kenya. And God, by his spirit, is going to make this happen. But another thing is there is also the call of God upon your life. You are a woman that loves God. There is is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace, but you get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women. Notice this grace. 
God is going to bring this grace upon you. God, I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation. There is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build. I'm seeing foodstuff and I'm seeing different things. First, it will have to do with young girls, people who have been abused and so on. But I see it not only that, I see women too. Women, God is going to increase your influence. I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the Spirit, carry this grace. Go to Kenya with it, go and excel. I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, go with this anointing, go and prosper. May the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. An angel of the Lord is standing here. Someone will shout here under a strong anointing. I just saw that grace. I don't know. First, I think until the shout happens, I know why God, just from here right to the back, there is an anointing. I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here. Now, listen. Whether you know it or not, if there is anything influencing your, your destiny that is not of the Christ, it's about to give way right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. At the count of three, hear me. Whether you are inside, outside, or following online, I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding. It's not just a chant. My Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, not a weak tower. The righteous run it to it and they are saved. I want to pray for you. I know you've shouted in other months, but great deliverance, great deliverance is about to come your way. Father, I pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the Christ, that is sitting on the destinies, of men and women manipulating their results I stand and call upon the God of Jeshurun the one that rides upon the winds and I declare let there be deliverance at the count of three shout that name Jesus one two three be free now be free now be free now please bring them out be free now. Overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. All the extension online. I declare be free now from ancestry. Be free from foundation. Be free from witchcraft. Bring them out. Paru Salikata. Embrekete Barata. Operations of darkness. I'm seeing a womb like the drawing of a woman's womb, and I'm seeing it close. It doesn't just mean physical barrenness, it means a spirit that is closing the door of results. Many people cannot get results, but right now that door is about to open, and I stand by the God of heaven, by the fire of the Holy Ghost everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation at the count of three let it be open one two three be open now 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 be open now
Mighty God. A few minutes we are going to pray for the sick now. Now please listen. I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one. That's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining. It's just a revelation that God is giving me. There are two angels standing by my left and my right. And every time I see this, God wants me to move. Listen, hear me. Except God is not God. When I pass any road where you are, anything that does not name the name of the Christ and any dimension that is not of God in your life, it must give way. Now, I only do this for this and overflow one. Afterwards, we are going to pray for the sick. Please, I want you to just believe. I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself father in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions I want you to believe it I will pray not everywhere but there are a few people 
I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit. Hali Shalatos, Pragados, Krekete Barakushna. I shift you in the Spirit. Every limitation that does not name the name of Christ. I'm praying mantles, anointings by the Spirit coming on people right now. Let that presence of God shift you to dimension in the name of Jesus. Dimension. I'm seeing a chain around here. I break that chain now. I'm seeing a chain around here. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Chains be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now. From everything that is not of God. Be free now. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Parush Ali Katosh. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now by the spirit of the living God. I break it now. Mama, I break it now. I break it now. Sensing an evil spirit just around here. I come against you now. I take authority over that influence. You must go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Overflow one, lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Harusa Sigadesh. Now listen. Be your brother's keeper. You don't have to touch me. Please, be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself. But as I pass here, anything that is not of God is about to give way right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. All times, I come against you now. In here is breaking, breaking over someone's family. Be broken now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be broken now. Be broken now. Beauty and glory to your life in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Listen, hold on please. Hold on please. I'm standing here and I'm seeing who is Rebecca? Rebecca, they call you Becky. Rebecca, just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry, it's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if, in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from, are you from Makodi? Benway State, in the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku, A L something K U. In the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit by the God of heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region. I stand by the God of heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them, please. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus, hold on, please. Right here, 
there is a gentle man who will be mightily used by God I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone I stretch my hands Lord I don't know where they are let that grace come on you now strange mantle prayer fire word fire illumination in the spirit receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now I'm standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven right now let deliverance come now let it come now I'm still moving the hand of God is coming on people right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please you don't have to touch me in the name of Jesus right here financial stagnation comes to an end an anointing is coming on someone for your family financial stagnation let it be over now my dear be free now out now someone here the power of God is coming on that person be free now free from everything that is not of God New dimensions, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on, please. I held someone's hand now. Holding a photo of a sick patient. Where is he? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? Ibrahim. This is not only something affecting him. This is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus, be completely free. And I speak to him, Ibrahim, may the power of God touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Mm. A time will come, God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You leave now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God. But surely a time is coming and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing. Father, I lay my hands upon this man. Let his dealings with the spirit progress. In the name of Jesus. Not only an impartation, a dealing that produces real power in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady with green, this lady, you, come. The Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. Two things will happen to you. Number one, I'm seeing restoration. God is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration. Number two, I'm seeing the gift of men. Please do listen to my message. Help them on the gift of men. God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray, may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. In the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. 
except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery, the way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me, immediately we do that, we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request. Where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her? There's a young lady that was wearing glasses. I don't, if, if you are here, you are the one. What do you do? You are going to be very wealthy. Come. Are you a lawyer? Huh? This is your mother? Where are you coming from, mother? Okay, you are the reverse woman. This lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy. Because I'm seeing you a lawyer. And you are going to, you, I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize. But I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people. This is a lot of business people. Signing contracts, helping people to process a lot of things. Millions, huh? That's what? That's where she is right now. Doing some things abroad. She's what? That's what she's doing right now, where she works. That's what she's doing now. Right now, where she works. Because I'm seeing God will just cause them to like her. It's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man. There are people who are out to genuinely bless. Yes, sir. And I pray for your daughter and I connect her by the Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. she will find these people. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, she will shift her to another dimension. Amen. Mama, God is saying I should tell you, forgive. Does it make sense to you? That's my husband also. He's a lawyer. But... Your husband is a lawyer? Yes, yes. What was the issue? Nothing is happening. Don't worry, ma. Do you know why you fell under the anointing? You fell on behalf of all the troubles in your... It wasn't just your personal falling alone. There are times that you fall representing all of these troubles. Because this is not what I'm even saying. God is saying I should tell you to forgive. Forgiveness. Now, it doesn't make sense. And God has not given me an interpretation. But let me tell you this. You see, look up. The average person seated here has been hurt by someone. Whether friends, are we together? Uncles, relatives, people you trusted and they betrayed you. Let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a terrible spirit. It's one of the master secrets to delay. Unforgiveness. It will keep you in one place forever. You are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate however you see forgiveness is a type of giving understand this forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive the only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance are we together the highest form of forgiveness is tolerance where you know it will happen again and you build a system around it to not hurt you. We live in a society that is so hot conscious. This one hurt me. This one did this. There are too many things that can create offense. The Bible says in nothing should you be offended. It's a choice. Mama, in the name of Jesus, please don't cry. I don't know what it is and why you are crying. But my dear, comfort your mother after the prayer. Eh? In the name of Jesus, what is before you? Is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of Jesus forgive in the name of Jesus forgive I also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret the bible says for dishonoring your wife the consequence is that your heavens will be closed it's not a lie that's why you see men struggle and struggle and 
simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate i wish i can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again but they will do it every time a door is about to open here offense comes it's a choice i will not be offended are we together father we pray for our daddy in the name of jesus the kind of miracle that god will do in the life of this man let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the lord i decree it and i establish it in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman here we are going to pray goodness you see how time just runs there's a gentleman here you are a member of mountain of fire where are you mountain of fire you are a serious brother mountain of fire now please I'm, I'm not just saying you attend don't listen to instructions please right mfm my friend you are serious you come from where mfm kano mfm kano how about you mfm calabar how about you lagos lagos i want to pray i'm not saying if you are from mfm just come out like that there are particular people it doesn't matter what denomination you are from once you are here huh this is a universal this is a master key it will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of god is doing but i want to pray for you my friend i i'm going i'm first going to pray for you where are you from i'm from a quiet bomb state there is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny yes, i hope sir. you are not embarrassed yes sir yes sir uh, you need help you have prayed stand up please you are a prayer warrior you can pray you can do fasting yes, uh, sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what i tell you i'm going to pray for you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until he starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of god this brother you see is very serious with god huh very serious with god you just need the right support impartations and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life hold my hand father what's your name huh antony tony in the name of jesus everything that represents witchcraft i join my faith with that of your father and your leader Dr. Daniel Odikoya and I decree in the name of Jesus, be free now. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of death far from your dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Who is looking for a job? Uh -uh, I'm not saying, I'm not on employment. I'm talking to these guys. That I, of course, I know that people are trusting God for jobs. Where did you apply Huh? Kaduna State Service. The Lord says, I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? Stand up. Uh, prophecy is powerful. In a moment, God can just change things like that. My dear, let me tell you this. It's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone. Huh? God is going to give you unusual influence. It will marvel you. Amen. Are we together now? Hold my hands. You believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Father, confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady. Let that rejected stone in the name of Jesus become the chief cornerstone. Receive of that grace in the name of Jesus. I speak it so. I make it so. I establish it by the power of prophecy. Let me pray for you. Gentlemen, I don't know if it's you or someone related to you, but there's someone God is giving a job. Someone looking for a job. But I want to pray for you. Father, you called out the gentlemen from MFM Kano and the remaining places. I decree and declare by the God of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life, let it give way now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way now. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
the Lord is showing me a lady I'm not going to ask you to come God bless you but I'm lifting up my hand I'm seeing you know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face this is what I'm seeing but that one is not bride of wedding this is evil covering your entire a human being with almost no head huh? and the Lord is saying I should pray that that veil be torn I don't know who that person is but right now the power of God is going there, there, there are many of you I perceive in the name of Jesus that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare that veil torn into pieces now torn into pieces now inside outside online torn into pieces now the last case I attend to and then we we'll begin to pray for the sick nothing ever lasts in your hand this is the problem you are trusting God for in fact is one of your requests nothing many good things continue to happen but they never last if a, if a season of open door comes three four months sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two three months for reasons you cannot explain you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years as it comes you will see it sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream you may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you this is what i'm seeing the moment that thing happens it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down but i'm praying right now in the name of jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the Christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty I declare by the Spirit of God be free now be free now help them please be free now free now my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you i saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit i release you into that dimension in the name of jesus christ we have to hurry up and pray for the sick now now please watch this this lady jumping shame and reproach I call it by his name and I command it to leave you now shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of Jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what I'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders why these things i'm not saying to run consciously i'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of god order in the church are we together the the hand of god now as i speak is coming upon you my soul longs and even thirst for you my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face and burning longing for you. I need you. I need I declare to all of you that came out by the spirit I shift you go forward now go forward now the power that holds you down 
I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Go forward now. I release your families to go forward now. In the name of Jesus. Now, please hear me. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, listen. For those who will be laying hands on you, don't think that because it is not Joshua Selman laying hands on you. Remember I told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace. We're about to pray for the sick now. Now listen, please. There are three conditions that I will want to minister, lay hands on the people myself. Remember, don't tell lies. You cannot come to the truth lying. Are we together? Don't insist that I just want Joshua Selman to touch. That's not the idea. Aside from those who are in the main auditorium that I request to come out, if you're trusting God for a miracle. If you are here and you are suffering from cancer, number one. Number two, you are suffering from HIV. Number three, you are suffering from barrenness. It doesn't matter what overflow you are in. If you have any of these three cases, please, with those who are in the main auditorium, I want you to join them and come. Otherwise, please, all the overflows, move to your projector screen and stand there, all as directed by the ushers of protocol. Anyone trusting God for to be prayed for, for healing right now, I want you to make your way to the front quickly. And then in addition to that, the three cases I've mentioned, you come into the main auditorium and join. Please quickly, we have to hurry up. Overflow one, please walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, I don't know from where now. As directed, walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand. Um, my God, I don't know if there's overflow two B then just walk as you are directed somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately please overflow four um also just move to your projector stand or as directed those online following from whatever nation of the world just connect by faith as we pray hallelujah now please watch this our time is gone and we're going to be doing this very fast listen please if you are here and you are yet to write your prayer request but adventure you are coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need everyone you can pen down your prayer request now when you're done please lift it and there will be ushers PR help them protocol help them whoever needs to help them let's make it very fast overflow one two three those online I believe that theirs has also been collated. We're going to have everything now so that as soon as we're done, we'll pray for the request. The moment you are done, please wave it or pass it to the person um, at the aisle where it can be picked. Give them room to write. If you need a piece of paper, you can help your friend or wave your hand. and righteousness Lord you reign King of the land You are the ancient of days Lord you reign Help me We cry holy Holy Let's your
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have some hands tonight. Um, Pastor Jakes and Ejimi will do Overflow 3. Since there will be several people there, Overflow 3. They will be ministering to Overflow 3. Benga will go to Overflow 1. Promise Overflow 1, 2. Um, Kenny Overflow 2. 2A now. Uh, 2A or 2B. Praise the Lord. Isaac Overflow 2B. Praise the Lord. Ima Overflow Overflow what now? What is left? Huh? Overflow, the last overflow. What overflow for? Okay, no overflow to be go to overflow four. Praise the Lord. It'll have to be a very quick walk because there are several people. I'll minister to the people here. Praise the Lord. Now please listen. Please. Except they want to talk to you prophetically, don't worry. Listen, just a touch is all that you need. And I want you to believe by faith. As soon as they touch you, do what you couldn't do. Head back to your seat. Unfortunately, because of the limited time, we may not have time to take testimonies. As you would have seen in many of my external ministrations. For two reasons. One, this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people. If we we'll pray and say, if you are healed, come out. It will take a lot of time. We don't have that luxury of time. Praise the Lord. So we are doing three things at the same time. One, we are praying for the sick. Has promised. As promised, okay. Pastor Alpha, oh, uh, who is in overflow one? Only you, two of you, okay. Pastor Alpha, join them in overflow three. Pastor Femi, uh huh. He, Pastor Femi should go to. Did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, overflow two, two B, okay, with, with Ima now. 2B or 4. You are in 2. Only you. Okay, so, um, Femi, please join him in Overflow 4. Overflow 4. Praise the Lord. Just direct them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace. And we declare, let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please write your requests, believing. The worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this. It will be very fast. Afterwards, I will just pray and prophesy to everyone and then we'll try to tie it up tonight. But whilst you are sitting, make sure you connect by faith. You can involve your loved ones. Let them know that God is moving right now. He's blessing people. Lord, we give you all the praise. Let there be great miracles by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise up on your feet. If they are still praying for you, where, wherever, whatever, overflow, don't worry. Just, just hang on there. Please stretch your hands to this request as we pray. I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare by the Spirit. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Please lift your voice, everyone. Let's have all the requests here, please. If there are people who are yet to submit... Shabarus kabarata shiketia. Embratu sezi alakata. I'd like you to stretch your hands to this request as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I see no more forever. Shabratus kabarus edegetia. Rakata baranda skete balakoto shiata. Embratus kabarus shalakatus. Rekete baruda shiata. Lord, turn impossible situations around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, release miracles, release solutions, break yokes, oh God. Turn around family situations for your name's sake. Reveal callings, reveal destinies. Let your people find purpose. Let your people find direction. Make sure you are praying. Lord, stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people. 
in the name of Jesus hallelujah please agree with me in the name of Jesus amen. louder amen in the name of Jesus amen. father tonight we come to you the God that can answer prayers and Lord I decree standing in the presence of your people thousands of people have submitted their requests a representation of their expectations their pain their disappointments their anticipations Lord I decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems we declare lose your grip now lose your grip now number two I declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the message of the God of heaven we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow these requests to be answered in the name of Jesus, we call on the Father of Spirits to touch them on that wise. And every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men, we break that hardness now. Father, answer speedily. Lord, answer speedily. Turn situations around every death sentence represented in this request we declare that death sentence is cancelled in the name of Jesus and so father we give you praise because we declare by faith the very faith of the son of God that these requests are met in Jesus name as I stand upon these requests I declare by the spirit of faith that in the mighty name of Jesus that which God has done now remains permanent in Jesus name and I prophesy over you by the God of heaven the Egyptians that you see today that pursued you from Egypt to the Red Sea and beyond I declare by the spirit you will see them no more forever no matter how long you have been in Egypt if you go out of Egypt, no going back. In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next three weeks, may the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit. I decree and declare, it will not exceed three weeks. And every request that has been released already but has been hijacked by men and systems I mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest I mount pressure on those systems allow this request manifest let it be so in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise hallelujah I'm going to declare the last prophetic word over everyone here. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Don't be careless about it. Hallelujah. Please, they can come and pick it. I believe in the power of prophecy. The spoken word is also creative. It can make things happen. It not only reveals what will happen, it makes things that has no business happening to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over you, please hear me, by the God of heaven every door that has been closed over your destiny I stand here as the servant of the living God I force that door to open now everyone trusting God for a job a meaningful job not a nonsense job that does not have honor I pray now 
a job that will not take your relationship away from God a job that will not make you compromise receive that job in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life the kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season I speak over you receive fresh fire access to revelation access to light receive it in Jesus name every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of God to come to pass I command them to appear now I preached last week on the book of remembrance let me pray that prayer in the name of Jesus I open the book both in the heavens and in the earth and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth I compel remembrance now I compel remembrance now every kind of barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness i cause it now and i command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death any family here appointed unto death i speak by the god of heaven be free now Number two, every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the Lord. I cancel that pronouncement now. Listen, by the blood of the eternal covenant, in the name of Jesus, I cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now the kind of honor you have never seen in your life I speak to you by the Spirit step into it let me pray for favor I will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily access to the hearts of kings access to the resources of kings receive it now by favor restoration of visions dreams listen there are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it but it looks like you are becoming like Eli your eyes becoming dim I pray for you I fan back your vision to flames in the name of Jesus every pattern that is in any family you see it in your siblings you see it in your life I declare let it be broken now anyone in ministry here please hear me I speak to you as you return back to your various stations let fire fall upon your altar I pray for everyone in business dying business dead business let it come back to life now please don't just say amen believe creation is happening everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now but the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ hear me I speak to you by the God of heaven any man that fights you goes down instantly yeah. 
and anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of Jesus may God humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may God answer their prayers I open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of Jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth I declare give birth like the Hebrew women in the name of Jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but I must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of Jesus by the God who is the lifter of men I declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren in Jesus name by November miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer I'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that jabez cried unto god for the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries Let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as god is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job i redirect your focus now in the name of jesus christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of god to be manifest in the name of Jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not I stand in agreement with you in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make Jesus Lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle i've handed my life over to jesus but for some reason things have just scattered around my life and i don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and i want to make my way right with god please whether you are in overflow one overflow two the main auditorium aside from overflow three Please, I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now. Koinonia, celebrate them. Don't wait for anyone to come first. Quickly, if you're coming, please come and stand. 
Come and stand. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Koinonia is this the best you can do. Join them quickly. Scripture says you must be born again. If you're coming from outside, please make it snappy. Make it as fast as possible. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. Please lift your right hand. Believe that Jesus is here standing before you. Gentlemen and ladies, please join them very quickly. If you're coming, please come quickly. Quickly, quickly. You're coming, come very quickly. Thank you. Now, say this after me. Say it passionately. Say it truthfully, believing that Jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I ask you to be my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I move forward ever, backward never. These three ladies didn't pray the prayer. Somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer. The prayer is already finished. You, this yellow girl, and those two, those my sisters. Or shall any of you, are you not Christians? Direct them. Someone pray the prayer with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, begin to walk in victory in Jesus' name. I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You will know him. You will walk in his ways. You will command strange results in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I call you tonight the righteousness of God. I call you that you are part of the family of heaven. In the name of Jesus. All of the people who are just coming, you're welcome. God bless you. Just join that group that they are praying with and just pray the prayer that they lead you to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you died for. I decree and declare that tonight you receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that you reign in life. Go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. All of you in concert, I want you to follow the lady smiling at you with her hands lifted. Everyone, please follow her. And um, they will direct you to a few people to just follow you or praise the Lord. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this Dearly message. Be an evangelist by sharing message. to others to be blessed to keep and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you